In this video I will show you how to survive as one of the weakest players in the 4 player fixed card game when it might become quite obvious that the strongest player sets up himself to take you out firstly. And then even might win. I don't want to ruin the entertainment watching this video, so I'm not going to spoil who won this match, but believe me guys, this game is going to be epic. It's being played with my subscribers so we all know that we will be able to make our moves more freely, actually best of the best of our moves, as we know that none of us will be dumb to suicide on each other for whatever reasons like it usually happens in the public lobbies playing with randoms. Furthermore these players are skillful. The yellow and green players are master ranked players. And the blue player is a grandmaster, well technically a novice, but only because he has decided to play on his alternative account this time, but on the risk forever discord server we all have the rank roles assigned, so we all knew that he is a grandmaster. And obviously we are going to see from his own moves that he is definitely experienced. So as you can see in this game I decided to go for Australia, this is the continent I had the most troops near, another option would have been North America, but obviously it would take many more turns to capture it and I'm not necessarily be guaranteed to hold it anyways. So the safest option of them all is Australia, if I don't want to end up being the weakest and have the highest chances of getting eliminated first. I gave the players a turn to move their troops out of Australia or use them to attack a territory in it. But since they didn't, I'm just going to crush them, I cannot wait any longer because I do not want to end up in a disadvantage the troop wise. The yellow player has already captured a continent, while the blue and green players are almost two. So every turn matters, because when playing 4 player fixed card game with smart players, if you become the weakest, then the chances are, you will be eliminated first. Or unless they don't understand that someone must be eliminated, as then the game will just always be a stalemate when it shouldn't really be, as in a 4 player situation there's always possible to eliminate someone, even if all players are basically equally strong, as 3 of them could just simply team up on the 4th one crushing their troops into him. But if in a game with smart players, all the players think about turtling and hope what their opponents will just crush themselves like it happens playing with low rank randoms, then the game is just going to stagnate and the same situation just continues for minutes if not hours. So if you play a game with your fellow smart players who you know won't be stupid to suicide, then it's better for everyone to make the turns which they think are the best for the game rather than to turtle for everyone hoping what something magical happens. And especially if the strongest player is turtling too and refusing to take the weakest player out when he could totally afford doing it, then the games are total stalemates. Anyways, I don't really like that the blue player moved his troops out from Europe and let the green player get Europe easily. In a 4 player situation when 3 players have small continents and the 4th has a big one or is about to get it, then it's the best to prevent him of getting it or to start attacking him if he's already captured it as naturally we should be focused on the strongest player if we want to increase our chances to win. As if we let the strongest player grow, then eventually he will be able to eliminate one of us from the game. And you can never really know whether it will be another player or you. Well, in this case it could probably be pretty obvious that the green player is mostly keeps an eye on me. He builds a huge army on Ukraine, while doesn't really pay much attention to other borders, like he doesn't afraid of getting invaded to Iceland either from blue or yellow at all. So I think he wants to beat the Australian turtle strategy by eliminating me from the game and becoming the Australian turtle himself. So this is why I sent an attack request to my ally yellow to attack the green player, as not only because it's the best for the game to focus on the strongest player, but because of the fact that if we don't attack him, then obviously I will be eliminated first too. So it's like my last chance to try teaming up with someone if I don't want to instantly lose. Of course to send an attack request to attack someone isn't really a good sign itself to show someone that you have a really serious intention to actually attack that player. As another player knows that he could just actually end up being manipulated, like he can follow the sender's request, while the sender himself could just end up doing nothing towards that player, not attacking that player at all as he just wanted that the conflict between both of you would be started while he could just continue turtling and laugh at the whole situation. 
So this is why I didn't expect for yellow to do anything when I sent an attack request to attack green for the first time. So this is why I invaded the green player by myself first, to show yellow that I'm serious with my intention to attack green, to show that I'm willing to team up and if not completely get rid of green, then at least to make him very weak, as in case the blue player meanwhile became quite stronger, then we should switch our attention on focusing on him. So only now after I invaded green by myself first, I hope that the yellow player will follow my request. Especially after invading green I sent yellow an attack request to attack green again, and he himself responded to that with thumbs up, but as we can see it's the decision point for him, he's taking his time as he's not sure what to do. He might change his mind. And oh no guys, he actually did. The worst what could have happened to me, has happened. The yellow player has refused to attack green. And I mean I don't blame him. As we all choose to make the decisions which we think are the best for us. So if he doesn't want to team up with me, if he wants that instead of green the first player to be eliminated would be me, then it's obviously fine. But I just kinda feel betrayed as an ally. As to my attack request to attack green, the yellow player has responded with thumbs up but ended up with neither invading green, nor having such plans in mind since he moved his biggest army back from green's border. I mean if to my attack request he had sent me thumbs down or nothing at all, then I would have understood that he doesn't necessarily want to attack green, even though I showed my intention by attacking the green player first, and that would have been fine. But since he agreed to attack while actually ended up not following the request, I decided to break the alliance with him. As I mean we both are not stupid to start attacking each other while there's the green player who gets more troops than anybody else, it's the common understanding and whether for that we have alliance or not, it doesn't matter either way. But since now we obviously see that we don't have any plans to work together in general, the alliance isn't needed for us at all. In case for some reasons I have to attack him later on in the game, he won't get that much mad as we aren't the allies anymore. Well, since nobody wants to team up with me on green, I guess I will just have to accept the fact that I might get eliminated first and hope for the best. As I mean there are some chances that the green player will change his mind and decide to eliminate someone else as soon as he will be able to afford doing so. But if I were green I would still stick to the plan to eliminate red rather than someone else. Because it's clear to see that there is some tension going on between yellow and blue. Both of them don't like the fact that one of them doesn't move their troops out of it. While the red player is not only doesn't have any tension with any of the other players, but additionally he was trying to invade green into Europe. So in green's case if I were him, then I would definitely pick to take out red if I had to make a choice of which player of the three to eliminate, when having enough troops to afford doing so. Well, the blue player has just sent me an alliance request which I gladly accepted. And he even says to attack green, and that is some good news for me indeed. Well, I don't want to celebrate way too early, because I know that the blue player could potentially be not genuine about his attack request. So in that case I would just end up totally destroying myself. So this is why before seriously attacking green again, I want that the blue player attack the green player first, so I would know that his intention is serious and he genuinely wants to team up with me. So I sent him an attack request to attack the green player as well, and if he seriously attacks green, then I will attack the green player as well. And here we go, here we go Phila. That's what I call a proper ally. With both of us properly teaming up we are going to conquer the whole world, well assuming the yellow player doesn't start crushing some of his troops right now. And no, the blue player gets lucky over here. Maybe the yellow player doesn't necessarily want to crush blue's army, maybe he just pretends to threaten blue. Who knows, we will see how it goes guys. Anyways, I'm going to do my part as promised. I reacted with thumbs up and a heart to Blue's proposal to attack Green. So sure thing I'm attacking Green, as after all he still isn't invaded to Europe. Well, now he is. Leaving some troops here so it would be harder for him to recapture it, but at the same time keeping the majority of troops in Australia, so no player would take it from me. 
like yellow for example since he is strongest, or even green himself, as if I had left 35 troops in Europe while 7 on the border, then obviously he would have taken it from me. So it makes sense for me to leave the majority of troops in Australia. Sending the attack request for the blue player to attack yellow and keep attacking green if needed, as we must dominate this game. From the weakest players, we will become the strongest ones. Or at least there will be someone else eliminated first instead of one of us. And wow wow wow! The blue player is going an extra mile, all I hoped is for him to invade yellow into Africa, but I mean it's really good for me that he is crushing some of the green player troops as well. The sooner the green player will be eliminated from the game, the better for us. My main goal was to prevent yellow and green from holding continents, but I mean if the blue player wants to speed the things up, then I'm down for it. And nice, the yellow player has moved his troops out from the blue player's border, meaning if the yellow player starts properly guarding against me, then the blue player will invade him anyways. Blue wants me to attack green, maybe even completely take him out, but I'm actually not really sure this time. I do not want to potentially give away the game for yellow, as after taking green I would only trade in one set and would be left having 5 cards at the end of my turn. So the yellow player with already having 4 cards and obviously being the strongest player, might eliminate me, and then would have no problems doing the same with the blue player to winning the game. I mean I'm not totally sure if the yellow player would have the same number of troops as me and blue combined after me taking out green but I think it would be very probable. So this is why instead of following Blue's suggestion to attack Green, I decided to capture lots of Yellow's territories, as he has the biggest enemy for us right now. So the safest decision is to attack him, as we have dealt with the Green player pretty much anyways. And OMG, OMG guys! I cannot believe that the Green player has been just eliminated from the game. Well, I mean I predicted the green player to be eliminated from the game first, after I teamed up with blue, but I didn't expect that this elimination will be made by yellow. As I really thought that they had a strong alliance, the yellow player didn't invade green back then with his biggest army when I was asking to. And additionally he even put his another army from East Africa to the Middle East, so I wouldn't be able to invade green from this border as well. Well, maybe it was unintentional, but I mean he never moved it out before the blue player teamed up with me, so it was really helping the green player out for sure. Well, now after the green player was eliminated from the game, I don't necessarily have to attack yellow as the balance of the game will be sustained anyways, well at least as soon as the blue player additionally captures Africa. I accepted the yellow player's alliance, but not actually sure if I will be a loyal ally. I mean if the blue player wants we could continue teaming up together, but if not, then it's fine with me anyways. Then I will just be having an alliance with both of them and won't attack any of them at all. As I mean it would be just stupid to attack only one of them alone, while letting another one have continents and grow strong while that person would be just turtling himself. So in that case I would be just giving the game away for another player I'm not attacking. But to attack both of them at once, isn't a great option either, as I would just make myself weak, and at the end they would recapture their continents anyways. So the only good option for me when it comes to attacking, is to team up with one player to attack another one as long as it's equally beneficial for both of us. And I mean I kinda wanted to team up with the blue player again, so this is why I was building another army in Asia, but the blue player wasn't showing the initiative of it anymore. So after waiting a few turns to see if he changes his mind, I decided to finally combine my armies into one, as it became obvious that the blue player doesn't want to team up with me anymore. And I mean it's pretty obvious that they made an alliance with each other if we look at this border for example. Both of them could invade each other and put a decent amount of troops so it would be impossible for another one to recapture it without breaking the balance of the game. But obviously we see that they don't want to start attacking each other right now. So when they both choose the option to turtle, then it's not much up to me to do something as the Australian player, so I'm just forced to go with the turtling option as well, even though I would prefer if we had some real action going on. As it's just boring to turtle and basically do nothing when it comes to decent player games. 
We all understand that we will not be stupid enough to suicide on each other to give away the game for the third player, so the turtling becomes pretty much pointless at this point for all three of us. As the only difference after some turns will be in troops, we will have many more troops, but the game will still be in the same stalemate situation as it was if we don't start doing something else, other than just simply turtling or just attacking each other's useless territories back and forth. So unless one of them has a decent plan in mind which includes me being quite weaker than them, then it's pointless to do that what are we doing right now? So I don't know guys, maybe one of them has a really awesome plan in mind and just waits till I become quite weaker comparing to them, so then that person will be able to pull that plan off. But I really doubt it, I think they just make the same move silly expecting a different result to happen. But then again I might be very wrong and be surprised when one of them pulls a mastermind plan off. I know that there might be some things I am not aware of, and I know that I can never fully know what's going on in other player minds, so if something great is not seen by me, doesn't mean that something great cannot happen. So I'm just waiting and hoping to see. And yeah guys, the blue player has finally showed some action. He invaded yellow into North America. I think it should have happened a long time ago. In a 3 player more or less equal situation when you play with not suicidical players, one of the best strategies could be to prevent one of the players having a continent. And the easiest way to do it, is by one player taking over Australia, and another one over South America. So it will be basically impossible for the third player to hold something else, as the Australian player prevents the third player from getting Asia, and the South American player prevents the third player from getting North America and Africa by using the Central America and North Africa territories as his borders, and then according to the third player fortifications, the South American player has to accordingly fortify his troops too, so the third player couldn't blitz one of the armies anyhow without breaking the balance of the game. Probably it wouldn't be a good idea to do that playing in the public lobbies with randoms, as I guess they would just end up suiciding on you. But if you play with your fellow players who are decent and know about the balance of the game, and most importantly not dumb to suicide, then it's the best to do that. Because as you can see there was not a really good deal to bring back the situation where it was. The blue player invaded yellow, so the yellow player invaded him into Africa. In the second turn after the invasion the blue player sent me an attack request to attack yellow. I didn't respond to it, because I wanted to see if the blue player continues attacking yellow, so if he did that, then I would have probably joined him too. But since I didn't respond to it, the blue player fortified his army back and probably made the alliance with the yellow player again, well not necessary but the point is that they don't attack each other anymore. So I should have probably responded and sent the blue player an attack request to attack yellow too, so I'm wondering how that would have turned out, but since I neither confirmed nor declined that I would be willing to attack yellow, the blue player has quickly decided to back out and stop attacking him so I really regret that I didn't respond to it back then. Anyways, we started sending heart emojis for each other and I thought that we will come to the conclusion on attacking the yellow player again. But then something strange has happened, the yellow player said to attack his territory if needed, moving out his army out of Europe and probably indicating me to capture it. And that's what I did. But I'm seriously really confused right now. At first they didn't attack each other, so I would have become quite weaker compared to them, so I thought one of them has a really great plan which involves me, the Australian player being quite weaker, but now they let me hold Europe, so I would catch up to them the troop wise again, and that really confuses me. As it just prolongs the game. Well, the reason for the yellow player could have been to make the relationships with me quite better. But with the blue player I was already a very good ally and we could just teamed up or done something else again. But all in all it's still pointless to let me hold Europe. Nothing really changes and the game is as boring as it was. As the Australian player I cannot really do something good to get out the game of the stalemate situation if they don't want to attack each other, or even me at this point, at all. Well, one of the possibilities I had was to try taking over Asia, back then when the yellow player didn't move his biggest army into it, 
but I didn't do that because I was pretty sure they wouldn't have let me hold it anyways, and with me properly guarding all three borders I would have lost lots of troops, so at the end I assume it wouldn't have been a great deal for me at all. Well, the thing I could potentially do now, is to invade one of them into their continent and like split my troops to equal parts or so, leaving one half into the invaded continent and another part into Australia. So after me not holding Europe anymore, the player who I invaded would have to invade another player into the continent as well, so someone wouldn't get more troops than both of us combined, but that player might not necessarily do that. So I would possibly have to bring that army back from that continent to let that player recapture it. Or even the worst case scenario could end up happening of one player crushing one of my armies and most likely breaking the balance of the game. Well, another option could be just invade one of the players and leave my whole army into that continent getting out of Australia. But then I guess it still would be pretty much the same since they wouldn't want to attack neither each other nor me anyways, so we would just end up switching our positions. Anyways, I'm kinda fed up of them letting me hold Europe, so to make them invade me on a purpose, I will start setting up my troops to different armies on Europe next to their borders, so I could use them on them, I want to get rid of all the European troops, so I'm just going to equally split my central troops as well, and attack them equally, so it would be clear that I'm not picking on any of them individually, to show that I treat them in the same way. So hopefully after my attacks, they will start making some of them too. But here we go, here we go Phila. The blue player has actually decided to start attacking both of us by himself firstly, and that's awesome. I love to see some action going on again. And yeah, I literally happy by getting invaded by blue and getting some of my armies crushed. And I mean like literally guys. I'm not even joking. As we might finally get out of this boring stalemate situation. Let's see what the blue player is going to do again. It seems he is capturing as many territories as possible, and if he conquers and properly guards North America. I'm wondering if the yellow player is going to invade him. Well, it seems the blue player doesn't want to go for North America, and it's neither bad or good. But it seems the yellow player wants to hold South America and Africa without even guarding. So naturally my response was to invade him. As the Australian player I should invade anything I can. It would be just ridiculous to let them hold continents when they don't even care to properly guard them. Or I mean it could have been very possible that the yellow player was very afraid of getting a lot of troops crushed or even get suicided on by blue, so this is why he might have done so. But I mean it doesn't really change for me anything, if the yellow or blue players don't want to properly guard their continents, then I will just invade them. And wow! The yellow player has even lost 7 troops and then 3 by attacking ones of blue. So I'm wondering whether when it comes to big armies the balance blitz stops being balance blitz and becomes the usual true random blitz role. Or if not, then I'm not sure what's the case. But I think it could be very likely, as for very big armies we don't even see the success chance of winning that blitz role, even if the big army attacks only one troop. So I think it might be possible that the balance blitz stops being balance blitz when the odds aren't being showed anymore. And I mean I made some experiments with big armies on my second risk channel, doing the same big attacks using both, as well as balance blitz as well as true random and I didn't really see major differences in them. But on the other hand I just only made a few experiments, and these were just few same size army attacks for each experiment, not like hundreds or thousands of them. So it would be very dumb to make the conclusions having very small amount of data, but I thought I will just share it with you guys and ask what do you think about it. Anyways, the blue player sent me an attack request to attack yellow last turn and I did so, I invaded, well actually took the whole Africa from him. Now he says to attack the yellow player again, so let's properly locate my army to do so. I will invade yellow through South America. But wait guys, why did he send me thumbs down at the end? Well, it seems he refuses to attack yellow after all. Well, not the greatest diplomacy move to make when your opponent agreed to attack another player and actually did that, but when it came to your turn you decide to cancel it. 
and I mean I wouldn't care that much because I lost no troops taking Africa from yellow, but I mean why does the blue player wants to end up in the same boring stalemate situation again, when nobody attacks each other at all, and just lets each other hold poorly guarded continents. I mean why to wait till we have thousands of troops rather than trying to do the same with having hundreds of troops, or just tens of troops. As the only difference will be in the numbers, but the action we will be able to make, will still be pretty much the same. So I just see no reason to sit doing nothing and letting each other hold unguarded continents, as it just prolongs the game with no additional value. I mean in public lobbies with random strangers who tend to suicide a lot, then yeah, the patients can help you in the game. But when you play with your fellow players who you know are not dumb to suicide and also know all the turtling tactics as you, then it just becomes pointless for us all to turtle and do nothing. So as soon as we realize that we all are decent players, it's the best to start attacking each other, so the game wouldn't prolong at a ridiculous time. So yeah guys, I think I just have to attack the blue player here even with losing a bunch of troops. As the yellow player being in the troops disadvantage comparing to us won't attack blue. And if I don't attack blue, then the blue player will have more troops than me too. So when I and blue had the same number of troops, while the yellow player was a little bit behind, the right person to attack blue, was me. As you can see my attack has equalized our troops. Well, the blue player is not significantly behind, but in comparison before the attack the yellow player was about 40 troops behind me, the strongest player, while the blue player is currently only about 20 troops. Anyways, while I was the right person to attack blue last turn, now I and yellow are equal, so we should attack equally too. But since the yellow player is being sneaky and has no intentions to help me attacking blue whatsoever by blocking his army, I came with the decision to split two equally sized armies from my biggest army, and crush them into both of my opponents. Why 50 troops army? It's 50 troops because Blue's army was made of 40 troops, so I wanted to have good chances to invade him but at the same time not to waste too many troops wanting to crush equal sized army into yellow as well. And why I did attack yellow as well when he wasn't holding any big continents, is because to show him that I'm not going to do all the dirty work for us alone. So if he wants for me to attack the blue player alone, then I will have to crush some of the troops into him as well, so I would be safe not to ruin the balance of the game. Anyways, I'm really glad that the blue player isn't overexpanding anymore and tries to only hold Europe. So it's easier for us in terms of not breaking the balance of the game. Sadly the yellow player didn't attack blue into unguarded border back then, so now if someone wants to invade blue will have to crush one of his big armies, but in any case he is prevented of additionally recapturing Africa, so even if we don't invade him, then we still could possibly be good in terms of the balance. Even with yellow being invaded into Africa he still gets some additional troops by having a lot of territories and plus we have a two troops continent each. And that is so nice, that is so nice guys. I told yellow to attack blue when the blue didn't have an army on one of his borders which was only accessible to yellow, but then the blue player added some troops here so I thought the yellow player won't attack him anymore but he did and that's great. In any case he was the right person to invade blue, they were equally strong while I was like 30 troops behind, so after the yellow player's attack, now we all are pretty much more or less equally strong. Anyways, to move out from Australia, was not only to possibly invade Blue if he recaptures Europe, but more to change the things up. The reason why I stayed so long in Australia because in the last two long subscriber fixed card games I uploaded, the balance of the game was technically broken in other players favor when I tried hold a bunch of stuff, so I didn't want for that to happen again, I possibly hoped that one of my opponents will crush quite a bunch of each other troops, so it will become a possibility with a good blitz rolls as an attacker to try taking them out, but I noticed that my opponents are being quite passive. From time to time they might attack each other, but then back out and let each other hold continents again, so I realized that it might be better if I get out of Australia and try expanding by myself, and whether I succeed or not, it will still be more interesting to play as I will try to prevent them from holding continents as much as possible, I'm planning not be that much lenient as they were.
so at least the game should not be that much stalemating anymore. At least I would like to hope so. Anyways, the reason why I only accepted the Blue Players Alliance request now, but not in the last turn. Because I knew that he could potentially capture Europe, so if he had captured it then of course I would have invaded it, so our alliance would have been straightly broken. But now after his turn was ended, I accepted it and split some troops from my army to Europe, so there's no way he can capture it by not taking my army down and at the same time breaking our alliance. So now I get to be the only person with two continents and can successfully hold them because I'm allied with both of the players. Well, actually I didn't expect for Blue to get Asia so fast. I either thought that the yellow player will leave his army there. Or that the blue player will take his time capturing Asia. So I had two options here. Either to invade blue into Asia breaking the alliance with him, but then obviously I would have been invaded into Africa. Or to let the blue player hold Asia and additionally capture Europe and at the same time getting two troops more than him if everything goes right. And as you can see I decided to go with the second option, of course it leads more to the stalemate situation, but as the South American player I should have an advantage over the Australian player, after our big continents get invaded and the blue player gets back to turtling. Then I will have a possibility to possibly capture and hold both of the Americas. Or if the yellow player keeps his army there, then to capture and hold South America, Africa and Europe once again, but this time properly guarding all four borders. So with the yellow player being quite weaker than us, probably he won't be doing the dirty work for blue, and from the blue I will try to keep properly fortifying, accordingly where he fortifies his troops to, of course with four borders it can be very hard if not impossible, so I will have to look for the opportunity to switch out to holding both of the Americas instead, with having three borders only instead of four. Well, it probably isn't supposed to happen, as the yellow player has decided to invade me. But thank god he invaded the blue player as well, so I don't have to do that by myself, so the alliance between me and blue doesn't become broken. And since the yellow player fortified his troops to North America back, but this time not on the European border, I was able to successfully recapture Europe once again, but this time properly guarding it. And the blue player recaptured Asia once again. I fortified some more troops to my South American border, so the yellow player couldn't crush that army, as if he does that, then the balance of the game becomes broken and the blue player wins the game. Let's see if the blue player properly guards against the yellow player as well. Well, he doesn't. But it seems the yellow player decided to be totally neutral and passive, so at the end he didn't even capture a territory to get a card. Anyways. The blue player says to attack yellow so let's see what does he have in mind. He has just crushed his army into yellow, so I absolutely know what he wants me to do. He wants me to follow him as well. And sure thing I will help him. In a 3 player situation when 2 players get the same number of troops, it could be very good to team up on the 3rd player and weaken him equally. So if that player just hurdles or does nothing, then he will get to the point where it will be worth for one of the players to take him out, and the most important thing that the game won't be a stalemate anymore. These two players are going to have more or less equal endgame, or if lucky enough one player will outsmart another one and have some advantage against another one. But unfortunately the yellow player seeing what is going to happen to him if he continues doing nothing, has woken up from the winter sleep, and invaded us into our continents. And that was a smart decision. Well, let's see if I'm still able to hold Africa with this additional 10 troops army. And to be honest I have no idea why back then when I was turtling in Australia one of them having South America and Africa and another North America, my opponents didn't come up with the plan to team up on me. Like if they hadn't want to attack each other, then they could have crushed all the troops they were getting into me, similarly like I and Blue did to Yellow, so then I would have been prevailed from turtling too. Anyways, since I cannot hold Africa, I will expand to North America. But sadly the blue player has noticed this opportunity for me too, so I think this is why he left a big army next to the continent, rather than fortifying it back. But I told you guys that with the yellow being quite weaker, I will have a better advantage as the South American player, over blue who was the Australian player.
as with the yellow player being quite weaker he won't be able to properly team up with him, so the blue player will have to do all the dirty work by himself by invading me into properly guarded Americas. So with the blue player noticing that too, he made his army even bigger next to my border, so he would invade it. The bad thing is, that with him crushing one of my armies the balance of the game would not be broken, so unfortunately he will definitely invade me. But that he would not get a decent attacking advantage by me losing quite more troops, I decided to make the attack by myself. I lost 94 troops while he 96, so fortunately we ended up even. He didn't get the attacking advantage he was supposed to get in case I haven't attacked him by myself first. So that's great. I prevented myself from losing a bunch extra troops, and at the same time I'm staying as the strongest player. Anyways, now I think we ended up in the situation which was supposed to happen once we eliminated the fourth player called Green from the game. The situation in which one player is holding Australia, another one, South America, and the third player is prevented from holding anything. So if the blue player back then instead of letting yellow capture and hold North America would have prevented them doing so, then we would have potentially saved a lot of time. Or even if the yellow player had invaded blue into South America without letting him recapture it. But looking from the another perspective you can never know how decent the players you're playing with are, unless you played with them already, so in that case it was totally fine and even smart to play safe. And that's totally understandable. As you know guys, it's better to be safe than sorry. So I'm finally very glad that we all realized that all of us are decent players, so now we can attack each other as much as we want, without being afraid of one of us suiciding on each other on a purpose. Anyways, if the Australian and South American players, or me and Yellow had an equal amount of troops, then we could team up and start crushing some of them into blue. Like remember the moment when I teamed up with blue on yellow back then when he was in North America skipping turns. But since I'm the strongest player, while the yellow player is the weakest one. Naturally I want to expand and become even stronger, while the yellow player wants to prevent of me having the advantage by attacking me as much as possible. Currently the blue player would really like to get North America, but what's the purpose to give it for him? I don't see any at all. Well, at least looking from the game perspective, but not from the diplomacy one. As if I let him capture and hold North America, while he let me hold South America and Africa, with the yellow player not attacking me or blue as well, then we would get back to the same exact situation which was after the elimination of the green player, just with us switching the continents. So in this case we would have to play for lots of minutes if not hours again, until we would end up in the same three player situation again, with one of us having Australia, another one South America, and with the third one having no continent at all. So at the end it would be really waste of time, and for this reason I don't let blue capture North America, or at this case any other continent at all. Let's have less and less troops each turn, so we finally could conclude the game rather than letting each other get lots of troops by holding multiple unguarded continents, so with us having a few hundred troops each, the game would be a total stalemate. My opponents have done a really good job so far balancing me out, I was the strongest player having 30 troops more than the second strongest player, but now we all are equal the troop wise. The blue player doesn't get to hold any continent at all, but so far we haven't noticed him being in the disadvantage at all. With having no continent at all, he still stays as strong as me and yellow. The problem with my situation, is that the blue player is very smart to keep the yellow player's army unleashed, whenever the yellow player blocks it, he always unleashes it. So for this particular reason I cannot expand to North America, at the times the blue player isn't being in it. As if the yellow player had his army blocked in Australia, then I could potentially capture North America with properly guarding my borders, every turn fortifying my troops accordingly to the blue player's location, so he couldn't invade me, as if he did so, then he would break the balance of the game. But since the blue player always unleashes the yellow player's biggest army, I cannot capture North America with properly guarding it as then the yellow player would just invade me and I would end up losing a lot of troops. So it wouldn't be a great deal for me at all. 
So not sure how this game is going to go, but I'm still not losing the hopes to eventually capture and successfully hold North America. But I just need to do that very carefully. So I wouldn't end up being the weakest player or at the worst case scenario even losing the game. Anyways, now it's interesting. The blue player decided to turtle while the yellow player finally didn't invade me. So I think let's let the blue player having Europe and just add some troops to my North America's Asian border. Well, I didn't expect blue to try invading me into North America as long as I let him hold Europe, but I was wrong. The blue player is absolutely disgusted of me holding North America, that he even fortified his biggest army next to my border to be absolutely sure to invade it. Not sure why the yellow player just split some troops from his army and crushed them into my South American army, while he could have just attacked me with his whole biggest army through the Asian border, so I wouldn't have received the North American troop bonus. So that led me stay as the strongest player. And I really wish they would let me hold more than one continent quite more often. So I would get more and more of the advantage. To be honest it's really bad that the blue player is staying very aggressive. I wish he would become as passive as he was while I was turtling in Australia. So in that case that would probably lead me of taking over the advantage. Well, on the other hand I don't let him hold continents like the yellow player did, so this is why the blue player keeps staying very aggressive towards me. Well, in comparison I'm not lenient towards him either. But all in all I really like that all three of us attacking each other a lot, instead of getting back to the turtling once again. The turtling playing with decent players is very boring, so for an interesting game, all the players should avoid doing it and instead of that attacking each other as much as possible. It couldn't be more boring when all the players put all their troops to one big army and let each other hold unguarded continents. So as you can see we're making this game interesting. And it's a very good thing that we are getting weaker and weaker. We had one moment when all three of us had almost 300 troops each. Then we got to having slightly over 100 troops each, and currently I and Yellow have around 90 troops each, while the blue player has less than 60 of them. Well, the tendency says that the Yellow player is going to become noticeably stronger player. While I and Blue keep attacking each other, the Yellow player has stopped capturing a bunch of territories and just limits himself of capturing only one per turn just to get a card. Also I think he might purposely keep his sets at 5 cards so that it would be even less noticeable that he's becoming stronger. So me and Blue should be very careful at this point. As if we keep attacking each other so much, then we might get to the point where with the yellow player even though having a little bit less troops than both of us combined, he could potentially still go with the opportunity to possibly take both of us out, because he would have a good attacking advantage as an attacker, would trade in a set after taking one of us out and potentially would hold some continents for a turn by not unleashing another player's army in case that player would have it blocked. And yeah guys, the blue player understands that as well, so this is why he sent me an alliance request. And I think I will have to accept it. Yeah, definitely guys. As the yellow player even himself started to attack us by seeing that we are becoming weaker. Well. I was hoping that the blue player at some point will stop attacking me and becomes neutral, letting all the dirty work to be done by yellow by not invading me in the continents but at the same time not recapturing Europe for himself. But unfortunately my plan didn't work out. So at the end I'm forced to accept the alliance with the blue player and stop attacking him, so the yellow player wouldn't have more troops than both of us combined. Now it's up to yellow if he wants to keep invading us. I and Blue are not attacking each other at least to the point, where we as strong as Yellow again. And wow, the Blue player is even willing to sacrifice some of his troops in order to protect us. He is definitely very sweet and nice ally. Well, probably I should not have moved my troops back. Maybe, I'm not that sure actually. But in any case the Blue player's efforts are really appreciated. Also probably I shouldn't have unleashed the biggest Yellow's army. Or I mean I don't know, now after him crushing Blue's troops, we are equally strong. So it seems everything has turned out to be in my favor after all, right? The Blue player sacrificed some of his troops while the Yellow player crushed them. So I must say so far so good guys.
with me and Blue protecting each other, I'm going to become the strongest player once again. But OMG, OMG guys. I didn't see that coming. I expected him to turtle, I didn't see him going for Blue. Wow, that was unexpected. Have I just lost the game? Well, probably not yet. As he just made a crucial mistake by not attacking my biggest army first. As an attacker you're supposed to get a good advantage against the defender, especially when it comes to the balance blitz. So I think the yellow player has really left me a lot of advantage here. And additionally he neither invaded Africa, nor captured some more of my territories, which led me of getting some extra troops as well. Wow, what a fortunate blitz roll guys. I'm totally killing this game. The luck is definitely on my side today. And this is what I was talking about, the attacking advantage guys. Always take it for yourself if your opponent armies are not being blocked. Because it's just insane when it comes to bigger armies playing with balance blitz. Like honestly guys, poor, very poor player called yellow. At this point I even feel bad for him. I'm really wondering how the game would have turned out if he had attacked that army, and additionally wouldn't have lost 3 additional troops by having to repeat one of the blitz rolls due to the glitch, and of course would have additionally invaded me into Africa. Anyways, that was a good game. Even though with stalemate situations at some points, it was still extremely fun. Finally I've got a very decent game with nobody either suiciding or quitting. So I have to appreciate it. Thank you very much to all the 3 players for such a great game and I'm looking forward to play you all again. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then give this video a thumbs up. If you want to watch another decent player game with subscribers, then click on of the videos. Leaving 4 player games on the left, and 3 player games on the right, 